smells like rotten fix on a hot car seat. Hi. Okay, we're done here. <laughs> I'm Joy. This is Chris and Gizmo. I'm Cozy Glow. I am Chrysalis, Queen of the Changelings. Psst. Guys, I found out where that foul fix smell is coming from. Twilight Sparkle pushed aside the four teetering towers of books on the Canterlot Castle Royal Library's largest work table, and then magic down three more piles. She pulled out three tomes, set them down side by side, and started leafing through them all at once. Your Highness? The blonde-maned earth pony Hoof Maiden had approached with such silence that Twilight had not even noticed her. Yes? What is it? Twilight did not look up. The mare scuffed at the floor with a front hoof. Oh, um, well, um, it's just that you've been in here all night. I wondered if you needed anything, Your Highness. Perhaps some food? No, I'm fine. I have to find a solution. I don't have time to eat. Twilight frowned. And you don't have to call me that. The mare gave a quick curtsy. Yes, Princess. Sorry, Princess. Ugh. Twilight heaved a sigh as the mare backed out of the room. The night felt like it had passed in moments, especially after Spike had fallen asleep. The little dragon was curled up in the corner, half buried under a pile of unshelved scrolls. Hours of study and dozens of books and scrolls had turned up practically nothing of value. What am I missing? Twilight asked the silent room and her snoozing assistant. She sagged. This is where Pinky would usually pipe up with some weird advice that points me in the right direction. When the alicorn opened her eyes a crack, her gaze settled on the spine of one of the storybooks on a low-set shelf before her. The book's title read, How the Megan Saved the Day. Twilight stared at it for a silent moment, and then she got to her hooves, magicked her mane straight, and levitated the book off the shelf. This is ridiculous. I've looked up ancient myths and legends before, but bedtime stories? She sat down in front of the work table, set down the book, and then opened it. Antique illustrations of ponies standing alongside the odd bipedal figure of the Megan were accompanied by a doggerel verse in swirling, cursive mouthwriting. When pony lives hung by a thread, the Megan rose and bravely said, Though darkest now may shroud your eyes, the sun is surely going to rise. Twilight ran a hoof over the illustration of the otherworldly creature, noting the long spidery paws, the missing tail, and the awkwardly straight hind legs. She shuddered. Uh, Ribby? Friend of wing and hoof and horn, and foe of every monster born, the Megan came on Rainbow's light to vanquish evil with her might. Huh, Rainbow's light. Just like when, you know, that's silly. She turned the page. Foul magic brought an awful curse, dark and dreary, dank and worse. The evil presence sang to show how it relished spreading pain and woe. The illustration showed a purple shadow spreading over the land, covered in sneering, ghostly faces. Ponies fled in terror, but the Megan approached in the distance, followed by silhouetted Pegasi. Twilight read on. The Megan summoned fairy friends from where the south horizon ends. The fair folk's light of blazing gold purged the evil's dark and cold. Twilight frowned at the picture of elegant, sharp-featured pegasi with insect antennae. Fairies now? Please. 
She leaned in closer, studying the strangely familiar design of the creature's wings. She raised an eyebrow. But then, I never did find out where that gossamer wing spell I used on Rarity first came from. She caught herself and blushed at her own whimsy. Every pony's counting on me. I shouldn't be wasting time with a bedtime story for fools. She turned the page. The ponies cheered her victory and came from miles around to see. The one who saved them, one and all, by answering their desperate call. But not long past that joyous day, the Megan had to go away. For reasons clear to understand, she missed her home and native land. Though she's returned from whence she came, you may yet see her just the same. For the Megan will one day come back, and at her side... <gasps> Spike snorted and sputtered in confusion as Twilight magicked him onto her back and galloped out of the library. stench of burnt rubber filling her nostrils. Uh, what? Where am I? She opened her eyes to the sight of a town soaked with dark purple smooths. No, it's not real. She tried to stand up, but faltered on all fours when the wooden raft beneath her tilted ominously. Whoa! She tensed, her stance wide, until the makeshift boat steadied itself. Okay. That felt pretty real. She carefully shifted into sitting cross-legged and then hid her face in her hands. She groaned. What happened? I haven't had a full relapse in ten years. Why? What's wrong with me? What if nothing's wrong? What if it's all real? What if you're back in Ponyland? The thought crept up unbidden tempting Megan with its soothing surrender of sanity. It would be so easy to give in to the madness. Megan violently shook her head. Ponies can't talk. Unicorns don't exist. Pegasi don't exist. Horses can't be pastel colors or have rainbow manes or tails. Horse eyes are made of collagen fibers and pigmented epithelium, not jewels. She reached into her shirt and pulled out a heart-shaped metal locket covered in bright red lacquer and strung on a thick cord. She opened it, revealing a smooth, mirrored, and utterly empty interior. Magic isn't real. As if in answer, a soft sob echoed in the silent distance. Megan closed the locket and stuffed it back inside her shirt. She looked in the direction of the cry. The wooden cart was floating in the smooths, slowly drifting on the stuff's unnatural currents, and whoever was inside the cart was crying. Megan stifled the urge to call out. Instead, she sat still and did nothing. From inside the cart, a female voice spoke. <laughs> Megan frowned. Her hallucinations were playing dirty. I tried to do right. I tried to keep the family in the park safe. <laughs> the voice lost itself to further sobs. Megan's raft was slowly drifting closer to the cart. She wiped her eyes. The smoothie's stink was clearly making them water. And then squeezed her knees with her hands. Stop being stupid. She's not real. <laughs> Please. I don't know what to do. Megan took a slow, deep breath and let it out with a resigned sigh. Fine. Just this one. Just shut her up. Here we go again. Oh, come on. It'll be okay. You'll see. Megan said half-heartedly. She rolled her eyes. She could no more promise that than she could promise to lasso the moon and ride home on a moonbeam. The pony in the cart shifted. It's not! They're all gone! I just bug and dab while my nearest and dearest kid got... got... The pony 
jerked to her hooves and reared up over the edge of the cart to shout. It's never gonna be okay! <gasps> Megan shared the pony's gasp when their eyes met. Oh my god! Applejack! Megan scrambled for the oar and paddled her raft closer with desperate splashing strokes. Applejack's jaw dropped further, for the moment shock burying her grief. What? How do you... What in Celestia's name are you? It... You silly pony! It's me, Megan! Megan croaked through the sudden lump in her throat. The raft bumped into the edge of the drifting cart. Megan reached out and seized Applejack in her arms. I thought you were dead! She squeezed the pony close, looked up, and whispered, This is a thank you, right? For playing along? Applejack squirmed in the strange creature's grasp. The? Megan? Lock in the stores? She raised an eyebrow. But I, I... For crying out loud, it's just a name! She squirmed harder. Megan frowned. No, it's you. You've got the same name, the same coat, even your little butt symbol. Megan slid a hand over Applejack's cutie mark. Hey now! Applejack shoved her back and sat down heavily in the cart. Quit fooling around. This ain't the time nor the place. Megan nodded. You're right. We should leave. Find some high ground where the smooths can't get to us. Applejack shook her head. I can't. I can't just turn tail and go. My family's stuck in this awful stuff. Big Macintosh and Granny Smith and a little Apple Bloom. She met Megan's gaze. You're the Megan, right? Well, can't you help? And yeah, here it comes. Sorry, Brain. One familiar face won't make me give up on getting better. Megan sighed in annoyance. <sighs> Screw your granny! We gotta get out of here! <laughs> Applejack's forehead smashed into Megan's face in a blur of orange and yellow. The human fell back onto the raft, clutching her nose and groaning. Applejack's lunge had taken her out of the cart. She stood on the raft and stared down at Megan with fire in her eyes. Don't you ever talk about my granny like that! Megan hovered her hand over her own face and strained to focus her watering eyes on the blood covering her fingers. What? I don't care if you are the Megan. No one puts down my family. I'd do anything for them. Anything! Megan stared at the panting, scowling pony. She heard the hiss of her breath. She smelled the stink of the smooths. She tasted blood. She felt the rough wood beneath her and the sting of pain in her nose and upper lip. And she sensed the honest heartache and fearsome rage radiating from this same but different Applejack. This warm, breathing, talking, living thing. Son of a bitch, Megan whispered. I'm really here. Applejack glared in bemused outrage at the creature with whom she had come to blows. The Megan had said little more after a shocked statement, opting instead to stare at her in wide-eyed silence. Applejack decided to press the issue. Really here? Of course you're real here. For Celestia's sake, snap out of it. I didn't hit you that hard. The Megan rolled over onto all fours. No, I can't be here. It can't be real. It can't! Ah! She pounded the raft with her long-fingered paw and let out a strangled groan. Applejack backed up to the edge of the raft. Hey now. Don't get angry. She was suddenly acutely aware of the legendary creature's sheer size and of the meager scale of their wooden island in the smooths. But the Megan did not attack. Instead, she curled herself into a ball and started softly sobbing. <laughs> Applejack shifted uncomfortably. <laughs> oh, where were you, Applejack? Why didn't any of you come find me? I didn't mean to leave. I was just gone, and then I couldn't find a way back. I told them about you, but nobody would believe me. Nobody! I went back to the ranch over and over. 
I begged and pleaded, and then I ran away and hitchhiked. But Firefly never came for me. None of you came for me. And then... Then... <laughs> I'm sorry. I stopped believing. I made myself stop believing in you. I couldn't deal with it anymore, so I believed what people told me instead of my own memories. Applejack stared in frozen silence as she listened to the creature's meandering confessions and accusations. It all barely made any sense, but the hurt shone through, clear as a bell. The Megan was in pain, and, rude though she was, the creature had reached out when Applejack had let her own suffering show. Granny didn't raise me to turn the tail on some... some one having troubles. I... I don't rightly know what you're going through, really. But for what it's worth... I'm sorry. It must have been hard not seeing your friends for all these hundreds of years. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like that, Applejack. The Megan sobs blended with coughs of laughter. She fell on her side, facing Applejack. Sometimes it felt like centuries. Applejack raised an eyebrow. The Megan wiped her eyes. Never mind. Whatever, I... Whatever happened, it's fixed now. You were real. You were real and you brought me back. I won't let you down again. I can't. Applejack frowned. I don't understand. You're the Megan. You're a hero. You never let pony folk down. Not ever. Shoot. I got named after an earth pony who's been remembered for all this time. Just for having known you. The Megan stayed silent for a long time her tiny but bright eyes fixed on Applejack's. Then she sat up. This place is the same horror show it's always been. You can't ever let your guard down. Well, we're going to fix this. I swear to you, we are. She held out her paw, the fingers spread wide. Uh, I think I believe you. Applejack reached out in kind, and only flinched slightly when the Megan gripped her hoof and shook it. We should head out to Canterlot. If any pony can help us put an end to this, the princesses can. The Megan turned and took up the paddle once more, halting the raft's aimless drifting. As Applejack pointed the way to Canterlot, she gave her new comrade a sidelong glance and asked, So, uh, I always wondered, what's your actual name anyway? Princess Celestia tilted her head inquisitively. I was just going to check on the refugees, Twilight. What's all this about? Twilight Sparkle stopped in front of Celestia on the castle's front stairs. Spike hopped off her back. Twilight magically waved the storybook before Princess Celestia's eyes and held it open to the page that bore the shocking passage. It's this! You see? This is it! It all makes sense! This is why the Megan didn't act like she was supposed to! If I can find Applejack, bring her here, and cure her somehow, then the Megan will come back properly, and this will all be over! Celestia's eyes quickly darted over the page. Her golden magic enveloped the book, and gently but firmly pushed it down to the floor. My dear student, when was the last time you slept? Or ate? Spike raised a claw. Mm, not so. I use magic instead. But it doesn't matter. I found it. I found the answer. Twilight spoke faster and faster, her manic edge spreading through her voice like a spiderweb crack through glass. If I can help Applejack, then I can help everybody. And I will help them. I will. I won't fail them. I won't abandon them. I won't leave them out there alone, stuck in muck while I flapped my wings and got away. It's perfect. Her left eyelid twitched. It's perfect. Celestia's brow furrowed. Twilight. She paused. Her head angled upward. Her eyes widened.
Ron cried out and threw herself on top of the unicorn at her side, as shards of glass rained down around them from the shattered window. Bonnie, no! You'll be cut to pieces! Uh, uh, fine! The pair staggered back onto their hooves and looked around. What's happening? I don't know. Come on, we gotta get away from here before more windows shatter. The beast turned its blinded head toward Lyra and Bonbon and spread its wings, countless eyeballs rolling around to focus on them. The mares cringed and held one another, awaiting certain doom. But then, three stories worth of white stone tower swung down like a falling tree and shattered over the dragon's back, and a vision of holy fury descended from the sky. corona-wreathed, golden-plate-armored form of Princess Celestia alighted on a clear patch of ground. She spread her wings wide and spoke in the booming, stentorian tone of the royal Cantalot voice. We will ask thee once, dragon. Go in peace. Now. Her aura intensified. The grass around her smoldered and the stone bleached. The dragon shook like a wet dog, sending masonry scattering. It squinted its wing eyes against the princess's glare, and then unleashed a furious roar. Ponies! Kill the ponies! Celestia fixed her stance and lowered her head, leveling the razor-keen golden blade sitting flush with her flaming horn at the tainted beast. She addressed Lyra and Bonbon in a tone only slightly softer. Run! Snapped from their awestruck reverie, the two mares fled as quickly as their hooves could carry them. At least a dozen full-grown dragons were assaulting the city, and countless wormlings rampaging through the streets. Lyra ignited her horn. Her golden aura surrounded Bonbon. With a flick of her head, the earth pony flew ahead like she had been fired from a slingshot and tumbled down the street. Come on, you big ugly thing! Come and get me! Lyra turned to face the wormling. Lyra, no! Bonbon screamed in denial as the aura faded. She was halfway back onto her hooves when a blur of yellow and orange raced past her. The wormling inhaled, puffing out its chest to ready a fiery blast, and then caught the swing of a smithing hammer on the side of its jaw. <coughs> it tumbled to the side, spraying out smoke and sparks like a Catherine wheel. Lyra and Bonbon both stared through the rain of ash and embers at the towering inequine figure that had just saved them as the orange mare that followed her. You okay there? Lyra... Unable to form proper words, merely nodded. Good. Twilight's jaw dropped. It can't be. Applejack's eyes widened. Twala, you're all right. She galloped up to her friend. Twilight stayed dumbstruck for a time, her eyes darting between her friend and the coat-clad, bipedal beast at Applejack's side. Applejack frowned. Twala? Applejack? The voice that replied wasn't Twilight's. Applejack turned to the crack in the street where a yellow filly was climbing her way back out. Uh, Apple Bull. Applejack fell silent, now as stricken as Twilight. The little earth pony filly raced over to her sister and leaped into a hug, nuzzling the mare's chest. The act snapped the two older ponies out of their reverie. Applejack squeezed her little sister back. Oh, Applebloom! Thanks, Celestia, if you're okay! She rubbed her cheek against the top of Applebloom's head. She squinted back tears. 
I thought... I thought you... How you... Apple Bloom fidgeted in Applejack's grasp. Um, well, you see... Twilight smiled. Apple Bloom and some of her classmates made it to the clubhouse. I rescued them from there. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> they were, um, having an unscheduled field trip. Applejack gasped. <gasps> Lion hooking? You little varmint! When all this is over, you're gonna be grounded for a week! Then she hugged her sister again and let out a half-sobbed laugh. <laughs> she... I'm so happy you're safe. She gave Apple Bloom a gentle shake. Don't you ever, ever skip school again, you hear? She squeezed her close once more, laughing again. <laughs> Apple Bloom gave Twilight a pleading, sidelong look. So, Applejack, who's your friend? The creature stepped forward and dropped to one knee, a storybook drawing come to life. She set down the smithing hammer and held out her hand. My name is Megan Williams, and I'm here to help. Deep beneath the castle, and far beyond the reach of the din above, in Luna's dimly lit and darkly decorated private chambers, the Princess of Night reassembled herself with an echoing shout. Nocturnes, attend us! A herd of bat-winged grey stallions with slit-pupiled eyes galloped and flapped into the chamber, skidding to a stop before their sovereign and sitting to salute. Which ones, princess? Pray tell, Luna asked once they had all arrived. Did you retrieve the mantle from the old castle, as we once bade you? Yes, Princess. It was found and repaired in accordance with thy wishes. We have kept it in the royal vault, said the leader of the bat ponies. Luna nodded. Good. Fetch it and ready it for our use. The leader stared. Your Highness? Luna narrowed her eyes. Was our command too complex? Need we repeat ourselves? The leader cringed back. He swallowed. Uh, no, Princess. It's just that... There is a commotion on the surface. The city is... Do as we command! Prepare the mantle now! Luna folded her wings as she turned and trotted away from her minions. A silvery tear stood out on her midnight blue cheek. I know what I am.